Welcome to EMTB videos. I have compared the E8000 to other motors in previous videos. Check them out at the end of this video. Or up there. The Shimano E8000 appeared on bikes in late 2017. And I rode one in September that year. Back then it was a really lightweight and compact motor and Shimano had placed the crank axle quite far back on the motor. This design allowed for shorter chainstays and good bottom bracket drop. It was a game changer. An EMTB frame could now be designed without making any huge compromises. No more 480mm plus chainstays. No more extremely tall bottom bracket positions. This improved bike handling quite a bit. In the years after, most competitors have updated their motors, but none of them are significantly smaller or more lightweight. Today, the Bosch, Shimano and Bruse slash specialized motors look pretty similar. The E8000 doesn't look outdated by any means. I still remember my first ride on the E8000. The trails were wet and slippery and I had such a hard time riding the trails. The motor was just too difficult to control in boost mode. And when I dropped it to trail mode, there was so little assistance. Riding up the steep hills at the beginning of my local trails was exhausting. For me and many others, these climbs are unrideable on a conventional mountain bike. I need a motor to get up, but I couldn't get up riding the Shimano. Fortunately, just days after I got the bike, the eTube app was released. Now I could alter the motor power. The default settings for the E8000 was boost set to high and trail low. I dropped boost to low and I increased trail to high. That made such a difference. The motor went from being pretty much unrideable to being the best thing I had ever ridden. And the motor has improved since. Shimano has released several firmware updates for the motor. It seems to me the motor has become a bit easier to control in the highest boost setting. The changes aren't big, but it seems the motor is a bit more refined overall. The motor I'm testing now is a 2019 with the latest software updates as of September. It has been tested in both dry and wet conditions. The E8000 is pretty quick to activate. The cranks need to be turned slightly before activating. When I stop pedaling, power cuts pretty much instantly. In the highest boost setting, it's difficult to control the motor on these wet trails. The power ramps up quite fast and it can tip you backwards under certain circumstances. In these slippery conditions, it ramps up too hard. I'm never in total control of the bike and I can't avoid hitting obstacles and coming to a complete stop. In dry conditions, I'm able to ride this section, but it takes a lot of concentration and towards the end of my ride, it's getting too difficult. The solution is, of course, to reduce the power for the boost mode. I can drop it to medium, but I find that's not enough. I always end up setting boost to low. I think this is a very good compromise between power and control for most of my riding. This doesn't change how quick the motor is to engage and disengage. But it changes how the power ramps up when activating. It makes riding this section so much easier. I'm not completely exhausted at the top, just slightly exhausted. And picking my line is much, much easier. Control will improve slightly by dropping to trail mode though. And many people will just select trail mode for this kind of riding. Trail is a dynamic mode. If you pedal lightly, you will get a low amplification of the power you put into the pedals. If you pedal hard, you can get the maximum motor power. A lot of people love the dynamic mode. I use the trail mode a bit myself, especially in very difficult sections but it's not my favorite mode. I like the even power amplification in boost mode. It gives me extra help when pedaling lightly, 
so it helps me relax between the difficult sections on the trails. On the technical trails, I really like having the trail mode at medium or high, and boost at low. But I'm not fully utilizing the motor with these settings. I never get to take advantage of the maximum amplification in boost in the highest setting. And that's a bit annoying. It's not like I'm gonna stop several times mid-ride to increase boost to high, just to get up a super steep gravel road. The E8000 is not as tweakable as some of its competitors. More options would make it easier to tailor the motor for a wider variety of riders. This is one thing I hope Shimano addresses in the future. Another thing they probably will address on future motors is the noise level. I know a lot of people don't have an issue with it. I don't either really but it's quite a bit noisier than the most silent competitors. At lower cadence, noise isn't too bad, but it turns into a whine at over 80 RPM. On the uphill tarmac test, which I occasionally call the commute test, at maximum power the E8000 performs about as well as the other top-of-the-line EMTB motors. It's hoovering around 24 km per hour. In my other test, I compared it to the 2020 Bosch Performance CX, and the Shimano was weaker going uphill at low cadence. It's not a big issue for me though. I will only use maximum power on transport sections. For technical trail riding, I won't use max power on any of the popular EMTB motors. At around motor cutoff speed, the E8000 is very pleasant. There is no sudden loss of power and no kick when the motor reactivates. Also, there is little resistance when pedaling without motor support. Previous tests show the Shimano E8000 is comparable to the 2020 Bosch Performance CX and they are both noticeably better than the old Bosch Performance CX. So, to sum it all up, the E8000 is still among the lightest and most compact motors. It can be tweaked to offer a great blend of power and control, making it one of the best motors for trail riding. I really miss more tweaking options to allow for better motor utilization though. And I've given this feedback to Shimano already. Also, reduced noise would be a nice bonus for future motor generations.